Welcome to Bayesian Statistics. We're going to talk about the normal distribution in this video, and we'll just get in rolling enough to maybe say nothing about it. But uh, we'll do just a little bit here on it. So um, the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution is one of the most popular probability distributions, partly due to the central limit theorem. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about the central limit theorem right now uh, for lots of reasons, but I want to focus on what we do know. So what we do have is a PDF here. So this is the probability density function for it. It's a continuous random variable that goes from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, you can see that the density uh, is quite interesting to look at. But the most important thing is, is notice that it has two parameters in it, okay? And those parameters, mu, can go from negative infinity to infinity, and it's a location parameter. It's actually the mean. And sigma squared is has to be greater than zero, and it's actually the variance, okay? Now, I mentioned this before, and I'm going to keep mentioning it. This has two parameters in it. So whenever we work with it, we have to worry about dealing with both parameters. Because in order to set a prior distribution, we're going to have to work with both parameters, not just one. So we'll have to set up a prior in some way to make this work. So uh, one way to make it work is if we assume that mu and sigma squared are independent of each other before the experiment. Like a priori, we have no idea how they're related to each other then we could specify a prior distribution where we just break it apart. We're going to set a prior distribution for mu, and we'll set a prior distribution for sigma squared. Okay, so we're going to define this one separately from this one instead of trying to do it jointly. All right, and if we do that, well, we can use this idea of conjugacy. Okay, so let's suppose x1 through xn comes from a normal distribution with mean mu, sigma squared as its variance. And we observe the data of the small x1 through small xn. And for our prior distribution, we're going to use mu follows a normal distribution with its own mean, mu0, and its own variant, sigma squared 0, as our prior distribution for mu. Then we can find the following conditional posterior distribution. And I say it's conditional because it requires us to know sigma squared. So we get mu given the data and sigma squared follows a normal distribution, so it's Gaussian. That makes it conjugate, right? Because our prior was normal, our posterior is normal, we're in conjugate world. And this whole formula right here is the formula for the mean of that uh, normal distribution, and this is the formula for the variance. Okay, so we do have a normal prior distribution and a normal posterior, so it's conjugate. But this is not your x bar s squared divided by square root of n type of thing. It's a little more complicated than that. But if you stare at it a little bit, you can see here's a piece of where x bar would be. And you can see here's that square root of s over n sort of piece hanging out here. But let's not, uh, or s over the square root of n, I'm sorry, uh, piece hanging out here. And so let's move on to our other parameter we have to worry about. Okay, so under the same situation, if we use the prior distribution, uh, sigma squared follows a inverse chi-squared distribution with sigma squared scale and uh, v degrees of freedom, then we can use this to find the following conditional posterior distribution for sigma squared. And I say it's conditional because in this one we have to know the mean. Okay, so sigma squared given the data and the mean follows an inverse chi-squared with v plus n degrees of freedom. And here is uh, its scaling factor. So uh, we started off with the inverse chi-squared. We end up with an inverse chi-squared. Everything is good to go. So we have this information. Uh, that will allow us to work with the normal distribution. Okay, so here it is all put together on one slide. Uh, ultimately, we're going to try to get the posterior, the joint posterior for mu and sigma squared given the data. Or even better, what if we could get the distribution for mu uh, given the data? Okay, because remember, we don't really care about sigma squared in lots of cases. If we're really interested in the mean, then sigma squared is what's called a nuisance parameter. But we'll talk about that more later. In the next video, we're going to jump into uh, the idea of Gibbs sampling. And these are going to form our 
sort of basis to work from. Uh, so when we started to give sampling, it'll be a bit longer, and we're going to go through some code to make it work. All right? So we'll see you there. We'll <laughs>